Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born in you, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born in you. The wind blows what it wills, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can this be? Jesus answered, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand this? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world, and man loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light, that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrought in God. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Throughout history, one book stands out, the Bible, the most popular book in the world, the most known and the most loved. The New Testament is the most loved part of the Bible, and the Gospels are the most loved parts of the New Testament. And John's Gospel specifically is the most loved out of all the Gospels. And John chapter 3, verse 16, is the most beloved verse. So John 3.16 is the most popular sentence in the world. If you ever watch like a football game, and the kicker goes out there, and he's trying to take a field goal, and there's like a camera angle from behind him. You see the kicker, you see the goal post, and you see a bunch of fans with like signs of arrows, like encouraging the kicker to kick it to the left, you know, unless that's going to work. But there's always that one guy, there's always that one guy with a bright sign holding it up that says, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. These 25 words sum up the gospel. This one verse sums up what Jesus did for us. And we all know the story, right? We know the story. We were with God in the garden. We sinned. We were separated from God. We need a Savior. God sends his only begotten son. He dies on the cross for our sins, and we are redeemed. This is the great news. This is the greatest news. The resurrection is the greatest single event that's ever happened in the history of humanity. It is the best thing that's happened to us. 
that Jesus died and resurrected for our sins. That is the gospel. The gospel, the word gospel means good news. What is our response to this good news? See, in the gospel today, we read about this man named Nicodemus who wants to go meet Jesus. And I don't know if you guys watched the show, The Chosen. If you haven't, I highly encourage it. It's a beautiful show showing the life of Jesus. And I love how they uh, portray Nicodemus in the show. He was a very well-respected man. But he was seeking the truth, right? He was inquiring about the things that were being said about Jesus, the miracles that were happening, and he wanted to go speak to him, right? And what does the gospel say? He went to speak to him at night because he was worried what others would say about him. He's, he's, he's a man of the church. He can't go and talk to a rogue preacher. What would everybody else in the synagogue say about him? He might lose his status there. You see, the night is not as just a physical reality for Nicodemus. The night was a spiritual reality in his heart. Right? You would think that hearing the good news of the gospel would change us, would change our perception of the world. It would take us away from our sinful desires and try to live an upright life. Right? To go away from the darkness into the light. The gospel, the good news... John 3.16 should make us realize that God came down to us in the person of Jesus out of love. And our response should be to go up to him out of faith in that love. It's an invitation, but he gives it freely, my brothers and sisters. And we have to accept it freely. That faith and love always go together because you can't have faith and trust in someone you don't love. And you can't love someone you don't trust. You can't love someone when you don't have faith in them, right? When you love someone, you have to have that faith and trust in that person. And Jesus is inviting us to have that with him, to have that. This can be our relationship with God. And what a beautiful gift. God gives it freely, but he will never impose it on any one of us. We have to also accept it freely. It is freely given out of love and freely received out of faith and trust. That explains hell and also heaven. That explains our damnation, but also our salvation. That God does not send anybody to hell. 2 Peter 3, 6 says, God not wishing that anyone should, should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hell is a choice, my brothers and sisters. Hell is also a reality. And it can be a reality for every single one of us if we choose darkness and do not choose the light. You see, in the conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus explains explains how salvation works. That man must be born again. He must be made brand new in Christ. He must have a new spirit, a new heart, a heart of flesh and not a heart of stone. But he also explains how one ends up in hell. He also explains how damnation works. Jesus tells Nicodemus, This is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. And then in other places, we know Jesus says, I am the light of the world, right? And men love darkness rather than light because their works were evil. Here Jesus tells us how people end up in hell. It's not because of their ignorance, right? It's not because of their misunderstanding. It's because of sin. Because we prefer darkness over light. My brothers and sisters, we all need to reflect if this is true in our lives. Like, what are the things that are holding us back from the light? What are the things that are keeping us in darkness? And I'm not just talking about small sins. Or I'm sorry, I'm not just talking about big sins. I'm talking about small sins as well. Because even in the small sins, it shows the desire of our hearts. When we hit that plus plus in the register, is that 50 cent going to really make us or break us? In the grand scheme of things, is it really going to matter? But that act matters because it shows where our heart is. And I'm not just picking on store owners. That can be in anything that we do, every decision that we make in our lives. We need to think, is this decision, is this particular act leading me to the light or keeping me in the darkness? We have to examine our hearts. It all starts in the heart, and it all ends in the heart. There's a beautiful line 
It says, the line separating good and evil passes not through stakes, not between classes, nor between political parties, but right through every human heart. Does our heart prefer darkness over light? Is sin way too beautiful to give up? Is sin way too pleasurable to give up? Seek the light, my brothers and sisters. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek him, and you will find him. Because from the moment you were conceived, he's been coming after you. He's been seeking you as well. That gift has been freely given to every single one of us. But again, it has to be freely received. Ignorance of the gospel does not damn you. Misunderstanding does not damn you. It's not the knowledge in your heart that determines your eternity. It's what you have in your heart. How you treat those around you. How you love. How you are to be another Jesus in this world. That's how we get to either heaven or hell. The intention of our heart and the choice, the act of the will, right? The choice that every single one of us makes in every decision we make in life. So let us pray today. Let us ask the Lord for a new heart, a heart of flesh, a heart that is connected to his, right? A heart that loves God, a heart that loves his people, a heart that lives in the light and not in the darkness. Amen.